Well, this sucked. During the period where I was moving, the pair of stickers dropped and they were borderless once again. What ensued was total chaos, with most people mass selling and a few buying the dip. But it is now clear that saving Stockholm and Antwerp would not be possible. The reason why these collections saw such an insane rise is that we expected them to be the last borderless stickers released in the near future. Rio went towards a more traditional design, with the logo in the front and a certain shaped border behind. Dreamhack 2014, Cologne 2016, Atlanta 2017, Boston 2018, RMR 2020. Rio's design was back to the status quo, which would make Stockholm and Antwerp unique. Another chance to invest in Katowice 2014, you could say. But all of these dreams came crashing down when Paris dropped. Everyone who had a large investment knew the mission. It was time to dump. And that's how we get to today. If you bought a mouse hollow just before the stickers dropped, you lost 82% of your investment just like that. If you bought a Cloud9 hollow just before the stickers dropped, you lost 45% of your investment. But I won't harp on it too much. If you follow the market, you already know all this stuff. But if you don't, just know that people like me lost a ton of money on these collections. What's more interesting to me is how the market moves going forward. And for those who like me who still own their old stickers, what do we do now? I feel like I wouldn't turn any heads by saying the return on investment for these collections have tanked. Buying in at current prices may be enticing, but expecting another 500% pump throughout 2023 would be insane. Paris stickers do hollows very well, and golds look like golds. There's nothing new here. Your salvation will be found in teams that didn't qualify for Paris. So a team like Cloud9 or Movie Star Riders would still be unique. There's just more competition. With each one of these majors with borderless designs containing three team capsules with eight teams in each, that means there are 72 different team stickers that you could purchase, all with nearly identical designs as they are borderless. Throwing in the variants like paper, glitter, hollow, foil, and gold, that makes 288 individual stickers. Cloud9 stickers may be absolutely beautiful, but now it has to compete with something like a Gamer Legion Hollow, which will be significantly cheaper for a period of time. But it's not all doom and gloom. With the release of Counter-Strike 2 around the corner, Valve has made the decision to scrap the second major of 2023. It gives teams time to learn the new mechanics, and Valve would have time to fix issues that could hurt competition within those few months before Copenhagen. RMR 2020 was a makeup sticker for teams that competed in RMR qualifiers before the real major was postponed. There are no qualifiers being played this time around, so there should be no stickers. That gives us 10 months from now to the next set of major stickers. Throughout that whole period, people will still be opening capsules, applying stickers to their new skins, and investing in what they think has potential. 2023 and the beginning of 2024 could be a massive year for stickers altogether, so if you're confident that something like Stockholm and Antwerp can distinguish itself from the competition like I do with Vitality Hollows, then it does seem like a recovery is very possible. I would still say that selling current Stockholm and Antwerp investments and putting that money into Paris when the sale drops would be objectively the correct play. If we are getting this 10 month period without any new stickers, we have this brand new collection that is significantly cheaper. Lower price equals higher return on investment, and the release of Counter-Strike 2 bringing a ton of hype back to the market could make you a lot of money really quick. But I haven't been doing any of this personally. Stockholm and Antwerp were amazing opportunities that I am quite sad about, but I consider them a side project if anything. One thing I've learned talking to people that have DM'd me months after purchasing an item after watching my videos is that one thing remains consistent. No one regrets buying cases. When I started making these types of videos in 2019, when I went through my cases in an old inventory overview, when I covered the case pump of 2022 and early 2023, I have had people come to me saying they have bought stickers because of one of my videos and they tanked. I had people coming to me saying the operation skins they purchased didn't work out the way they hoped. I have never had someone say they aren't happy with their cases. 
I love buying things I have some level of passion for. All of my Fnatic Hollows, a bunch of random skins I found unique, creating a Catavisa 2015 collection. All of these things feel fulfilling, but these boring cases sitting in a storage unit absolutely demolish them from a pure profit perspective. Cases across the board have come down significantly from their peak, and it's looking like they have mostly stabilized. Para stickers being such a hot commodity will result in a massive investment, which would force the price of cases down a little bit more, and that's your time to buy. With the Counter-Strike 2 release imminent, we will see peak player numbers and a whole bunch of content. Parts of that content will be case openings like the 2016 days. While it's all theory until the day comes, I believe cases not only are the safest purchase, but might see the biggest boom of any item in the coming months. My recent purchase was Horizon Cases, with some buff balance I helped a guy sell, but I have a large investment in Prisma and Fracture Cases, and it will continue to grow if the dip from the Paris sale is significant. From there, it's the typical investment type items, like Catavisa 2015 or some knives that see visual upgrades in CS2. I would 100% recommend diversifying in some older items and skins that could see a pump when the update comes, but from a pure profit perspective without using variables that could change, as Counter-Strike 2 may see continuous visual updates, going into cases, attempting a higher return on investment with Paris, or maintaining stickers that are unique to either Stockholm or Antwerp and selling the rest is where I personally sit. Now will I actually sell my somewhat dead Stockholm stickers? Probably not. I mean, look at my storage units. They are disgusting. I have been wasting this money for years now. Why stop? But if I actually listen to what the little guy in my head tells me, I would expect a higher inventory value in the coming months if I did any of those three things. I hope everyone is doing well despite the massive losses that some are seeing. I probably lost a few thousand dollars, but CS has given me so much, I was personally able to move on. It's the importance of diversifying. I asked myself many times if I should just sell my Catavisa 2015 stickers and buy into Antwerp. Maybe I sell my knife and buy a few mouse hollows. Those Fnatic stickers are going to be a disaster to sell. I should start now and funnel that money into more Vitality hollows. But if I went all in, even though it was making so much money, I would have almost nothing left. Valve is the sole proprietor of this market and it's the reason why all of these items have the ability to rise and fall unlike in other games that have infinite supply or don't even allow trading or purchasing. But it's also why this market is dangerous. Mouse stickers are just another reminder of how dangerous this market can really be. But Stockholm and Antwerp aside, it feels good to be back. I'll let you all know what I was up to in these last two months very soon. I personally think that the experience that I had could be helpful to all of you, so stay tuned.